So, hello everybody. This is the Asperian D700 series of dog controllers from a small boutique company, which is actually located pretty close to where I live. So when they asked me to support their devices with Reaper, I was really on it. And yeah, so here we have it. I support it as usual for Bitwig and Reaper, but they also come with their own Bitwig implementation. But I guess mine has a bit more of configuration options, but that's already with these devices lots of stuff you can configure but to be clear right from the start this is a luxury and boutique device and the price is quite heavy for example for this setup here of the two controllers so the main device with the extender plus the OLED displays you have to pay about 2600 euros so that's <laughs> quite a bit of stuff so you might ask straight away why should i get this at all for this amount of money you could also get an x touch bearinger which is much much cheaper but nevertheless i think the form factor is very interesting so the size as you see now on the screen is much much smaller compared to the x search so for the same size i would need here for the x search i have about this size i could place here here maybe three or even four of these controllers and would have up to 30 two channels with them compared to 16 with the X touch from Behringer. But there's more. So this is a full metal device with 100 millimeter faders. And this is also full RGB on the knobs, not the only seven colors you have on an X touch. And we have also nice OLED displays, which are readable very, very nicely, as you also can see here. And updating and everything is really nice and fast. So, but let's have a look at it. What is also uh, different, and these are now some extensions I did for them. So I support the, the colors on the knobs, which represent here the colors of the track, as well as you notice, I hope you can see it. We have stereo view meters on every channel. So it's not only like an icon on a master, it's available on each and every channel. And the main benefit I think of these devices is that they come with a tool which allows you to configure basically everything here. You can change the whole buttons and everything. And what is also interesting is that we, but well, that's more of an issue. So you don't have the full control area like on the x touch or icon controllers, but there are workarounds for that. For example, you can also configure double clicks. For example, you see we have only two buttons for navigation, but if I switch here to Bitwig, if you go here to the first track and if I press, I go here with eight tracks down but I have a double function. So if I double click that, I can go here or I can figure it to, to jump only by one channel, but I could also put a totally different command on that. Same is for this encoder. It's configured to change the main volume. So let's go down here. So you see, so I can change the master volume of that, but if I keep it pressed, I can change the playback position with that. Yeah, but let's zoom out so we can see that better. And this is also configurable. So I think the, the things you need most, like navigating your the tracks, channels, and also the position in the project, everything is there. Another thing is that button, for example, you can also configure that. I can show that in a second in the tool. I configure that to defeat the solo. So if I have, for example, solo three tracks, I can just press the button and remove the solo from it again. So, but again, let's have a look at this tool. So you can go here for code and there you configure everything and change every button and there you have also for this double click so the user interface here is in German but it's also available in English so you can activate these double click functions and I only activated it for these two buttons but you can do that also with a loop button for example or the metronome and do then different functions with that. And you have the full amount of MCU commands available. So you can put in there everything you like. And as usual, if you check out the Driven by Moss manual, there you can also find out my commands, what they do with the Mackie control. And they are also here in a 
brackets you can see what is the name of the mcu command for example repeat is repeat and these are also the names you find in this list for configuring these devices for example here they also put it's not activated but you could activate that double clicks here on the mode buttons and this would also then activate here for example f5 yeah, but talking about mode, let's switch back here to Bitwig. So the modes are the ones you already know. So I also have here the EQ mode, which inserts an EQ, and there you can then change here your EQ settings for that. And here the frequency, for example, and there's normally your device setting and your sends are there as well. And what is also different, so you notice here in the display, it's not only the normal Mackie protocol where you have only these seven characters and two rows of these seven characters you have here four different information and you have 12 characters so for example you see also here that it's s1 so it's a first send and so you also see on an additional line you see the name of the send as well as well as its value and you always see on which track you are so you get also an index for the track so we see we have for example this one is track eight and we are controlling here here, the delay two pretty helpful and much more modern than having only six or seven characters in a normal Mackie control so let's have a look at how this is configured here in, in Bitwig. So we have here the controller settings and here I change it a bit. So you have here now also the Asperian D700 as an option. And there you have now less options actually, but it's easier to set up. So the main display can be now configured for the normal Mackie six characters for seven characters or for the 12 characters of Asperion. Or you can also switch it off if you don't have a display. And the second display is also the Icon Pro X and the V1M as previously. And the Asperion second display is basically also the first display, but you have these two additional information things which get activated then if you select that one. And what else do we have? You can also activate display colors which speak now the Behringer protocol, the Icon protocol and the Asperian protocol and this is automatically configured if you use this a drop down box so for example if you go to the X touch you will see for example we will have this Mackie 7 characters and the Behringer display protocol but if I go back to Asperian it will configure everything ready for you. Yeah, one thing I forget, you might uh, notice that these buttons have all the same colors. If you don't like this, there's also a special edition available, which has the more maybe colors you would expect. But uh, this might be a discussion if you want to have it less colorful. So it's up to your choice. So also the special edition is currently not available, but they told me it will be available soon. Nevertheless, if you want to have a chalk wheel, they are planning also have a little chalk wheel device, similar like they already have here with their D400 series. So there is already a chalk wheel available, but they will also have a more modernized one, which will also have different buttons. And this will also be available in the not too far future. So let's also have a look at Reaper. So here we have it in Reaper and what we need to add is a Mackie control. So Mackie and Mackie control here with one extender. I already have here one configured and it's already configured. Oh, interesting. So that's already working, but we have the wrong profile. We need to have the Asperion, but basically it also works with a normal Mackie protocol. So if I would say I have a traditional uh, Mackie MCU, also that is working nicely. And yeah, but let's, let's switch back to that one because we want to have the 12 characters. And also here you can set the colors. These are boring gray, so you could change that here to a different colors. And let's go here maybe with some blue. 
okay and then you see it will switch to that okay so and but besides that it works absolutely identical as in bitwig you see here you can change the volume you can change here the parameters like the panorama here you can reset it by clicking so it's all the features i have available for the maggie protocol also watch my older videos about the maggie protocol which is quite powerful what you can do with it and there's much more functions you can assign to it ah okay maybe one thing i also did it doesn't have a volume or track option for the mode so i added also to the panorama button that it also toggles the track mode so if you press that you're in a track mode which means you have here the volume on a first knob the panorama on a second and if you would have sense you would have sense here on the other buttons of the controllers so I think that's about it. To sum up, what are the pros and cons of the device? Let's start with the cons. So I think I would get the special edition with the colored buttons. Otherwise, I think it's a little bit hard to distinct what is actually here active. And I do not really miss here this section, but I guess there are people who will miss it. I'm mostly also on the X-Touch. I only use here the solo defeat, the save button, and and yeah, maybe repeat and play. So that's, that's the stuff I use. Nevertheless, I guess there are people who will miss that. There is an additional option, but which this would add even more money to the cost of these devices. And also there is no fader for the master volume. You have to use this knob until you put also the master as part of the tracks here, which is also possible with my driven by Moss extension. And then you have it also on a fader. So this is also possible. Yeah, so that's basically the cons. The pros are absolutely the form factor and they are absolutely solidly built. Nothing shaking here. This is really metal, nice devices and they're really small while keeping these big faders and nice big knobs also with a good spacing between them and they're quite usable. Furthermore, you have the OLED displays, which is very nice, the RGB buttons with that. And yeah, with their tool, it's fully configurable to your heart's alive and you have stereo view meters on each of the tracks and i think i will keep these as my main devices because they save us so much space it will be possible for me to add something else here on my desk and before that for example here I can add here my army controller finally to the top. So what do you think? Do you already have one? Do you know the company? Tell me your experience. And yeah, until next time, make some funky music.